Well, I have some things on my heart. First off, I just want to say thank you for all the likes and all the uh, subscribes. God bless you all. Um, to all the new people, I mean, uh, it's growing. Uh, every every day, uh, there's thousands of new people that are coming over, and um, I just want to say thank you all for your support. And so, you know, I I've been praying. I uh, and and I, you know, last night I was asked one word. I said. You know, what about, you know, people keep asking, what about the eardrum? You missed it on the eardrum. You missed it on the eardrum and you, it didn't bust, nothing bust about the eardrum. And, um, this, I'm going to tell you all, this is what I saw. I, I, you know, and this, and I want to say this, I have noticed a lot of times whenever I watch other prophetic videos, if they've missed it, they don't come out and address the elephant in the room. They just kind of bypass it. They push it under a rug. And, uh, they don't, well, they don't come out and address it and say, Hey, I missed it or whatever. They just kind of act like and ignore it and act like it never happened. And I, I am a very transparent person. I, I am never here to try to, uh, be false about anything. I tell you what I see and I pray and that's, that's, that's what I do. And, and I, I see visions. The Lord gives me things. And so this is what the Lord showed me. Okay. I saw the, uh, bullet. Go by his ear, right here. And whenever I saw it, I saw the, the radio waves. That's why I was trying to tell you, it was kind of like the Matrix whenever Neo or whatever was going backwards and, and you could see those bullets shoot like that. And it was like that, that, that's why I made that first video and I was trying to show you all that. That's what it, I was seeing in the spirit. I saw the sound waves whenever I was praying out in the Lord, which I was seeing over into what he wanted me to see. I saw the sound waves coming off of it, and whenever it passed by his ear, I saw blood flow down his face, just like it did, okay? I did not know that it pierced his ear in the vision. I did not see that. I saw it go by, and I saw blood flow. So I, I'm telling y'all, this is where people get in trouble in the prophetic. You add to and you take away from what you're seeing. So here I was. It's immaturity. I'm just being real with y'all. It's immaturity. I need to grow. Uh, I added to. I say it was a busted eardrum because I saw blood flowing down his face. So I thought, surely th there's no way any sound that's going to go by the, anything like that, that's going to cause that to pop. Okay, something. You know, so I'm using my intellect with uh, something I'm seeing in the spirit. And whenever you're doing that and you're trying to decipher what you're seeing, you're adding to it. And so... Shame on me. I saw that. So I see this thing flying by his ear and I, I, I see the blood. So, and then I see him fall to his knees. That's where I saw. And then the, that's what the Lord showed me that he would get radically saved on his knees. And then the vision ended there and he showed me another vision. And then, and then I saw, like I told you all, I saw the, um, the judges. And all the things like that. I, I, I saw that. And then I saw it go in and I saw the fall. I would end in the fall. I told you all that. So a lot of people wanted to know about the economic crisis that I saw coming. I believe it happens at the uh, beginning of next year. Going into, and that's why I said, well, say, that's what I saw. That it would there, it was in the winter months whenever this cr crash happens. So will it happen this year or will it happen next year? All I know is that when you're seeing in the spirit, you see in part, you hear in part, you know, and in a day is like a thousand years to the Lord. Okay. So when you're seeing this where you think it's imminent, it could happen right now, but it may be two years down the road, three years, uh, the, but I believe it's something that's going to happen quickly. Okay. Cause that's what I was sued, but that's what I was showing. So nobody said, well, you missed it. No, it's still going to happen. There is a planned, it is a planned economic collapse. I saw a dam full of a, um, of like all kinds of, uh, like bad things. It would look like sludge. It was all kinds of, I saw barrels and they had riding on the side of them. And it said, uh, 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 about finances, bank collapse, bank, uh, structure meltdown. It was all kinds of like big 50 gallon drums. This is interesting because I'm, I've never shared this before. I, it was a, it was a dam. Looked like a Hoover dam. And it had, uh, water, of course, but it wasn't water. It looked like nasty, swampy, muddy looking thick water. It was gross. 
and there were 50-gallon drums balancing up and down in that sludge, and they had written on them, uh, like economic crisis. It had, uh, like, like I'm saying, um, dollar crash, things like that, and they were written on the barrels, and there was all being contained by this dam. And the Lord said, they are holding back all that until the election is over. And when that is over, it will be released. That's what I saw. And I saw that dam break and it flooded upon the American soil. And all those 50-gallon drums fell and rolled down. It was like a toxic waste is what it looked like rolling down out of that big dam. And so, like I said, I've never shared that publicly. But, um... That's interesting. I should have shared a long time ago. Now I have to think about it a bit. But, um, okay. So when this happens, I saw food lines. I saw people lined up down the street and it happened like that. It was that quick. I saw the stock market ticker. I could, I was watching, excuse me. I was watching the, the TV and the lady came on the, 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 it, the, the, TV uh, lady came on there and it was, I believe it was CNBC that was on the TV channel. And, um, no, I believe, what was it? CNBC? No, it was a CNBC. It was MSNBC, which is, I would never watch that channel, but it was, but it, but I, but hit, I, I'm just doing it. But, uh, but it was on that channel and I seen the, the, the thing on that, the, the, God help me. I just, I'm just telling you I'm being real. Well, it was on MSNBC. And, uh, and the, the ticker was going down and the stock market was crashing and people were freaking out. And, um, it was the lar, it was like, it, it was terrible. And everything happened that fast. The dollar collapses. And so all that dam was released. And then all the dollar clap crash, and it was people like I say were stand to us in and like like I've said this too, I don't know how long it lasts. When I'm talking about President Trump praying in the Oval Office, it could have been praying for months. I believe this thing lasts. I've told you about the four oak trees. People want to know about the four oak trees. What about the four oak trees? What about the four oak trees? What does that mean? I believe it means four years of an economic um downturn bad and it will take that time frame for things to get better i said the first year came on suddenly and people did not expect it and i saw their faces they had dirt on them they looked dirty they looked like the the children that you see pictures of in the depression they look uh, their clothes look dingy toward the two middle years and i saw people really struggling in those two, uh, the first year was bad, two, the second year was bad, the third year was bad, and things started to turn around into the fourth year. They started coming out of it, okay? And that saw the four years. Four oak trees. First year came on really quick. I'm going to repeat it again. First year came on, like overnight, bam. People weren't expecting it. They They lost everything. They were in their shorts, and they were in t-shirts, and they were freezing. This was a symbolic thing. It was not about that they were cold, but they were, it was like, oh no, a shock. Oh, the cold air came. The, the leaves on the trees fell and everything was bearing. The oak tree was still alive, which represents America, but it was, but the leaves and the fruit of the tree was, was, was stripped off, which was prosperity. The blessing, the acorns, okay, was stripped off and it fell, it was gone. Four years, I believe. Some people say it's four seasons. I do not. I believe in my spirit is four years. First year was really hard. People were in their, their uh, winter clothes, their summer clothes. They were cold. They did not like it. The second, the next two years, people had winter clothes on, but they looked dirty. They had dirt on their face. They weren't, they were struggling. They act like they were, it's almost like you're going through that war-torn time. Like you're like, oh. Woe's me, you know, like you, you uh, were bearing it up there. Just, they got grit. We're going to make it through it that you could see they're struggling. They're having a hard time. The f fourth year, 
with coming out of the, 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 the bondage. I saw Trump taking pieces of a ship that had went poo, okay? And it was America's ship. And all the ship had different pieces. I saw the, a wing over here. I saw a cockpit over there. I saw the tail over here. I saw the wheels of the, the ship. The, the, uh, it's not a ship. It's a, a plane. A rocket ship is where I'm trying to rocket ship. Okay. It's not a boat. It's a ship, like a rocket ship. At, at, so I had the wheels were off and everything was pieces everywhere. But he, this is amazing because in the vision, President Trump took a piece of the wing and piece of another piece and he couldn't put it back together. I want you to hear what I'm saying. Okay. This is very important. Listen to me. He couldn't put it back together the way it was before. He took it and put it back together to make it usable and how he could salvage it the best he could. Okay? And he created a new kind of an airplane. It could fly, but it was never as good as the original. It was never as good as the original. It could fly. This plane that he will build will fly again. I believe in the fourth year, but it will never be America like it was. Okay, it was a type and shadow. I saw USA written on the airplane in black letters, and it was a silver plane that looked mirrored. It was a mirrored looking plane, like aluminum. Okay? That's the way the plane looked. I feel the Holy Spirit on this. I need you to hear me. I'm warning you. On the plane, it said USA, but it never was built back the way it was supposed to. It had plane, the parts look like it was never going to fly again. It looked impossible for what I saw in the vision. One wing was like kind of crooked looking. The other wing was kind of looking like this, and the back tail wing would had holes in it. But he got that plane off the ground. And I thought, there is no way that's ever going to fly again. Most people didn't think so. But the Lord spoke to me, and he said, I'm bringing a wisdom like Solomon to help, for this will be my rescue to America. And in this, he said, there will be a great humbling that will come. And in the humbling, America will be rebirthed. There will be a rebirth and come for America. And I saw America start to come up off that ground in this broken up looking uh, airplane, looking ship looking thing, rocket ship. And it cut started to fly, but it was like a biplane. Why, barely wanting to go. It wasn't a jet no more. It wasn't a, it wasn't a rocket, but it was a plane that was flying. And then the Lord showed me upon him, uh, upon a Mexico. I saw Canada and I saw America and they created no borders. It was, I want to call borders because I'm, I'm not going to add to or take away from anything. I'm going to intro again. I did not see no borders. I saw that there was no financial borders. That's a better way to say it. No financial borders. I never saw no borders like you were able to come into Mexico and everybody else with no security. I saw no financial borders. It's a better way to say that because the people we don't write, you missed that. But he's going to build a wall. No, he will build a wall. Okay. And there will be, uh, I've seen that there will be a wall built, but financial borders is a better way to say this. Okay. And they created a one currency between them to try to combat the BRICS. Combat, combat the BRICS nations, okay, because they were strong and they were trying to thrive without America. And 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 he created a Mexico-Canada currency. He signed contracts. They created their own thing. That's how they were trying to salvage what they could. England and uh, Germany, France, all of Europe join in with the financial system, with America. That's just why the euro collapses too. When the dollar collapses, the euro collapses. 
and I'm trying to warn you about this because the Lord warned me. I, I was finished with the video, and so I'm adding this in there right now. The euro is going to collapse. The dollar is going to collapse. The BRICS is going to take over and be this, the, this, the super hub of the world. They're going to have their oil. They're going to do it with Saudi Arabia. I'm warning you all, and I hope you're listening. Saudi Arabia, China, Japan, Russia, all of the Middle East will all follow the BRICS nations. Venezuela will follow the BRICS nations. Africa will join up with the BRICS nations. All of it. Egypt. All of it. It will all join there. And eventually, I said, the flag starts to spread out like a Chinese flag. And it goes all throughout all of uh, the Middle East, all of uh, uh, Africa, and it keeps going. It looks like an Indiana Jones. Remember, I warned you all. It'll be the, the videos down below. And it goes boing, boing, boing. It spreads, and it goes throughout some of South America, but not all of South America, okay? So this is what the Lord showed me about. Uh, this would be when Trump's in office, okay? Australia will join in. They will be uh, uh, a ally to America. They will stand strong. So will England. So will Canada. So will Mexico. So, and Mexico, I told you all was neutral. They just wanted to be where the money was. They were kind of just, they were, they were in the neutral zone. My God, we don't want to be broke. We want to go in. But that's whenever Donald Trump makes this deal. I'm telling you, I've seen this in the spirit. I'm warning you all. He creates a, a Canada. I'll say this again, a Canada, Mexico, America, no financial borders for a, I hope I don't butcher this name, a, Mer, a Yamero. Yamero, is that right? Son of Yamero, something like that, whatever. But it's a new currency that was like that. But Europe will join up with it, okay? And that they would try to combat with the BRICS. And it will fly some, but it will not be as strong ever. People say, well, why would the Euro crash? Why would that happen? An escalation of war in Europe, a great acceleration with Russia, Ukraine, and in uh, Poland, all getting involved. And this is why there will be a major draft soon. I've warned you all, I've seen a draft in America, not just with men, but with women, because they've asked for equal rights. They've asked for uh, women to be created equal, not to look at it as sexist and all this other stuff. So they will add that into the draft bill for women to be drafted and men. Okay, so this is what I saw. This is the plan. I don't know if we'll ever get past. I pray it doesn't. I'm praying against this stuff. But this is what I see when I pray. I warn you all of things to come. This is what is stirring in the spirit. Some of the stuff we can't pray, it will, it, and it, it won't stop, Brandon, but I'm just letting you know. So, I'm just, you know, the war in, a, in Europe will cause the euro to crash. So, he builds that plane, and, and so then, I see us coming out of it. And I see America, like I said, I saw, like, revival, I saw revival break f forth. I saw in these hard times, I saw revival. I saw shakening, I saw people thinking, this is an Ichabod, God left. I heard people saying that, this is God's judgment on America. And, and, and the Lord said to me, Brandon, this is not my judgment upon America, this is my wake up. This is a wake up call, this is correction, for you will not be a goat nation, you will be a sheep nation that serves me. And, and it, because it, and I've told you all, because of the covenants that were made at Plymouth Rock, they all stood around Plymouth Rock, and I saw the old ancestors of our country all standing around Plymouth Rock, taking communion and calling out for a God-fearing nation, a one nation under God. That's the kind of people that stood on the, on that, that soil, and they proclaimed that this would be a nation that serves God. And he said, those prayers still come before my throne. And he said, Brandon, I will not let those prayers be ignored. I still hear them. They still cry out to me. And he said, I will, I, I honor them. And not just because of how bonehead these people are, but at like what we have in the office now. But he said, he's going to bring that back still. And they will stand. This will be a righteous nation again. I'm telling you, there will be a great shakening. And I'm telling you, there will be an awakening. 
and great revival. Now not saying everybody's going to be part of the revival. Not everybody's going to get saved. But I'm telling you there will be a great harvest of souls. There will be a great harvest of people coming into the kingdom of God. And they will be born again. And there are going to be healings and deliverances. And people set free and all kinds of amazing things will take place. People say it's a great Ichabod, but it will not be an Ichabod. It will be, uh, uh, he say he never leave us nor forsake us. Lo, unto the end of the earth he'll be with us always. But most people will say, well, God's judging America. This isn't true judgment. True judgment is separation from the Lord for eternity. And you need to understand that what is coming will humble, humble America, humble the people so that he can reach you. Okay? Because your head's full of pride. People are full of pride. And they are not willing to come to, in, in, in come to repentance. They're not willing to. But when you take away the precious, which is usually the cash and the go, that's whenever, whenever that you get their attention a little bit. That's what happens. Ho, ho, walla. You touch my wallet. Ah, oh, ah, oh, yes sir, yes sir. Touch, touch the thing that's most important, what you love the most, you'll see it. When you touch the thing they love the most, that's whenever you see the shaking. And that's what's gonna happen. Because, because a lot of people, um, have a love for money too much in, 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 it's gonna be shaken. But, when I've told you about the investments, and told you about that, and that's what you're gonna see now, I'm gonna talk to you about that. That's for the remnant. That's for the people to supply for the body of Christ so that they are not lacking. We have to stand out in these end times. Why will we have the finances? Why will we have the money to help support the churches so they don't go under? To support people so they have foods to support people for whatever they ate. You gotta have finances for that. But you've gotta be listening to him on what you're supposed to be doing for your family and how you're supposed to put food back, whatever, for what the storm that's coming. I told you, it's a massive hurricane. And the eye of the, the bands of the storm are just now entering into the shore. They're just now coming in. The eye has not even gotten here yet. Folks, we're fixing to go into a time like we've never seen before. And people don't want to hear that. They get mad at me and they call me doom and gloom. But I have to tell you the truth and what the Lord has showed me. You want to put me on a shelf and say he's flaky? Whatever, at least my your blood is not on my hands as a watchman. I can wash my hands and sleep better at night to tell you, I told you what was coming. If you don't want to hear me, that's fine. But I don't have to worry about my, my me going to bed at night saying, listen, I didn't tell them because I was afraid of what they'd say about me. I don't care. You need to hear it. And if you listen to Sugar Coat or Pop Prophets, these these little My Little Pony Prophets, going out there, you know, Stroking everybody, hey, everything's gonna be okay. Everything, gonna listen to all. Let's let's go eat some uh, some uh, Lucky Charms and have and watch a cartoon, Captain America or something. Whatever, you're not gonna get that from me. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Jesus is coming, but he's coming back for a church that is without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for a people that are separate unto him. He's coming back for a people that are without that are that are not walking in sin and practicing sin. Okay. We, yeah, people mess up. Yeah, we have times that we, we, we struggle with some things, but it, we don't practice it. We don't deliberately going in and, and doing stuff. Saying, well, I'm going to live and do what I want to do. No. The very thing that you say you got to say from, you're going back to. And you can't do that. You have to say, hey, I'm sold out. I'm sold out for Jesus. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm seeking Jesus with all my heart. Yeah, we may stumble and bump our knee along the way, but we pick ourselves back up and we're still seeking his face. We're not going, well, I want to down and ride the fence. I want a little bit of the world step and I want a little bit of Jesus and I want to ride the fence as much as I can. I got one foot in the world watching porn on the weekends and, and going out and partying and drinking and going to the strip clubs. And I got one foot over here because I go to church on Sunday. Whatever. You're going to hell. Just telling you. That you're, you, when you, if you die today, you're going to hell. You say, well, no, I go to church on Sunday, I repent it. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't treat God that way. Hey, you can't do that way. And you say, what's under grace? Whatever. Whatever. What, watch what happens. I'm telling you, there's a whole bunch of you going to wake up in hell and you're going to go, I thought I was a Christian. No, no, 
No. He said, I'll rather you be hot or cold, but if you lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. What does that mean to you? He'll spew you out of his mouth. Depart from me, he says, I never knew you, but I prophesied in your, your name, Lord. I laid hands on the sick in your name. I cast out devils in your name. I gave to the church in your name, Lord. But he said, I didn't know you. That's Jesus that's going to say that to you folks. You did all the things. So let me tell you, look at this. The, he's talking to the church. These are people who, uh, I'm going to tell you, it takes some, it takes some anointing. It takes some authority to cast out a devil. It takes some anointing and some authority to lay hands on some sick and see him recover. It takes some anointing and some authority to hear him and prophesy. Those are people who supposedly think they're walking with him. But he said, I did, I never knew you. Depart from me. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the church. But people don't want to acknowledge that. Well, it's under grace. I can live the way I want to. Woe unto you that think this. Woe. God help you. God help you. I hope you're listening to me. There's a shaking coming. And it's going to be a shaking to waken. And when this happens, will you be on the right side of eternity? Will you be standing on the right side? Because he told me, Brandon, I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm drawing a line and I'm saying, who will serve me this day? Are you on the Lord's side or are you on the world's side? Woe unto you who are trying to walk the fence. If you walk in the fence, you'll wake up eternity in hell, I'm telling you. You better be on fire for Jesus in these last days. You think, well, I'm qualified to go to the rapture. Whatever, I've heard it so much on other people's channel. I, I'll watch one channel to talk about the news all the time. I'm not going to quote her name. Show my way out. You're rapture ready and ready to go. You're sealed into the day of redemption. Whatever. Whatever. If you are a walking in sin and you are not walking with Jesus and you think you, why well, I'm going to go out and sleep with my girlfriend tonight because it just, it'd be okay. I'm under grace. Whatever. Woe unto you. You better get your heart right. I ran, I, I've went on enough, but I felt the Lord tell me to do it. You need to hear me. But there's a shaking coming. And the financial things will take place. Things will happen. And God's going to have his revival. And we're out of here. The revival doesn't last for very long. It doesn't. I even talked to a, a mighty man of God yesterday on the phone. We talked about this because I've seen it. It doesn't last. It lasts, it probably lasts maybe six months or right, maybe even a year. But it doesn't last that long. It's a quick work. It's a great outpouring. And we're taken out of here. And in Jesus, in the great tribulation takes place. So, you know, that's my timeline. I believe it's going to happen quickly. I believe everything's going to fall into place quickly. And, um, we're going to get a great revival quickly. Um, but, cause I've seen when the revival takes place at a glorious church. I've seen where it takes place. The Lord even gave me the year, but he won't allow me to talk about it. He just told me to pray about this and, and, and intercede for it. Cause I, you know, but I know exactly when it's going to take place. Right. For the revival and everything, I've seen it. Uh, and he's told me, I have visitations from Jesus, y'all. He comes and visits me. And I, and I'm humbled by it. And, and, and I'm like, well, who am I that you come and visit me, Lord? But he does. And I'm excited he does. Cause I can come on here and tell you all about it. You know? So, but that's what I have for y'all today. So let's pray about things. All right. And I ask the Lord to speak to you on what, the, what he has for you, okay? And I'm going to agree with you, and I'll be your too. I'll agree with you that God would show you what you're supposed to do for your life and for your household, okay? Father, I just thank you for every single one of these people that are watching my YouTube channel. And I thank you, Father, for every single one of them because they've been a blessing to me. Father, I ask you, Father, that you bless them in the city and the field coming in and going out, that you you bless them indeed and increase their land and enlarge their ter territory, that we cause no pain. And I thank you, Father. That's a Jabez prayer. They, Father, it's still there. Everybody's on the Jabez prayer, so we're going to latch on to it again because it's Scripture. And, Father, I thank you, Father, 
that you said that you would, you would, the, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the righteous in these last days. And I call supernatural abundance over their homes in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that you said in your word that you would supply all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that you also said to Malachi that you would rebuke the devourer for our sake. Now, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the supernatural harvest that the, between the sowers and the reapers will go hand in hand for the time of acceleration has begun. And we call forth a great acceleration over our finances for great harvest is ours. Now, Father, we thank you, Lord, from the, for the angels from the north, the south, the east, the west. We call for finances to our home right now. And, Father, I thank you, Lord, for supernatural favor to get well, for supernatural ideas, Father, that you set in your word, Father, that you give us wisdom and revelation knowledge will flow freely in us. And, Father, that we would be like he we could have the mind of Christ and that like Solomon, Father, you blessed him was supernatural wisdom. Now, Father, I thank you, Lord, that, that you are no respecter of persons, and what you did for one, you would do for another. And I thank you, Father, that you anoint our minds to prosper. You anoint our minds to think, uh, to how to deal with finances, that we are not fools of many. The Father, that we be able to be trusted. For you said, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed out, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Now, Father, I thank you, Lord, and that as we give and as we sow and as we believe, you are the God of the supernatural, and you said you would give to us good measure pressed out, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto us. And I thank you, Lord, that we are those those children that are obedient, and we are we are overcomers, and we are walking in victory in these last days, not busted and disgusted for what's coming, for you showed me the economic crisis, and people wanted to talk about that. Father, I thank you, Lord, for supernatural abundance over our household. I call jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales commission, growth in business, and stays inheritances, income, interest and income, rebase and returns, all of it, Father. Anything that you have, we believe for supernatural abundance over our homes. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that we seek you, and you said you would find me. Knock, and the door will be open unto us. And I thank you, Lord, for your blood. I thank you, Lord, for your, for your word and for all the things that you've done for us, that you said you'd take care of us, Father. And I thank you, Lord, for every single person that is here that needs healing in their body. We call them healed and whole and well from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. And we believe we receive our healing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, I just want to say thank you all. For, for being a part of this YouTube. I know this probably wasn't really hyper-spiritual or whatever. Maybe if you were looking for it, but it just me being real with y'all today. You know, sometimes I feel like we just need just to be real.